Irons, Jin Wu called out. Iron quickly threw his shield to Jin Wu. After catching the shield, Jin Wu shifted his glance away to find Vulcan standing right before him. If I back off here, my soldiers will get wiped away. Without his soldiers, it had become far too difficult to hunt down Vulcan and its subordinates. So, Jin Wu chose the method that could ensure the safety of his soldiers. He raised the shield, and his arm muscles tensed up. Shortly thereafter, Vulcan slammed down with its club. Slam! Fearsome attacks that rocked the earth landed several times in a row without rest, but Jin Wu patiently endured them all. His high physical defense and endurance stat allowed him to block these attacks. When its attacks did not work, Vulcan became even more frenzied and pounded away with that massive club. However, Jin Wu was steadfast and his knees buckled not even once. Still, standing around like this blocking all the time wouldn't let him hunt the boss down. Deep frowns formed on Jin Wu's forehead. The thing was, unlike how it was with Cerberus, Vulcan's rage skill didn't have a time limit, the trade-off being the skill not as overpowered as the gatekeeper's version, meaning he couldn't remain passively defending forever like this. Jin Wu gritted his teeth. Constantly getting pounded on isn't my thing, either. Quang, just as the club bounced off of the shield for the last time, Jin Wu had been getting ready to counterattack and took the opening to leap towards Vulcan's head. However, he wasn't the only one waiting for an opening. Matching the timing of Jin Wu's jump, Vulcan quickly leaned its upper torso back. What? And then, the club flew in towards him from the side while drawing an arc in the air. He got me. If there were places where his hands or feet could touch, the story might have been different, but there was no way he'd be able to dodge the attack in the middle of air. Jin Wu activated the skill ruler's reach and pushed at Vulcan. Of course, the power behind the skill ruler's reach was far too low to move the massive body of Vulcan. However, the rebound meant that it was Jin Wu who was pushed back, instead. The tip of the club missed him by a hair's breadth. I did it. Jin Wu was flung away some distance and rolled on the ground a few times, but compared to what might have happened when hit by that club, his landing this time should be seen as far, far gentler. Phew. Jin Wu managed to find his balance and sighed in relief. On the other hand, Vulcan's expression had crumpled quite unsightly. It attacked, feeling proud and all, but in the end, it was all for nothing. That fact caused its fury to reach the peak. Jin Wu scratched the side of his head while staring at Vulcan's reddened face. Now what should I do about this? If he jumped to its front, the DMN thing would evade him with not much difficulty. But then, attacking other body parts instead of its head didn't look like he'd be able to critically wound it. What with all those layers of flesh getting in the way? Is there a way to make it impossible to dodge? It was at this point that yet another, and an arguably excellent, idea popped up in his head. The corners of Jin Wu's lips arched up. Suddenly, he turned around and ran. Vulcan mistook this action as him trying to escape, and hurriedly chased after him. Jin Wu moderated his running speed so Vulcan could chase after him. As soon as he discovered a suitable remnant of a building, his eyes began gleaming brightly. That one, on the other hand, when the distance between Vulcan and Jin Wu closed up, the giant demon lifted its club high up in the air behind it, to squash this bug-like creature. Finally, the chance to crush this annoying pest once and for all was here. A disgusting smile formed on Vulcan's face, and so, as the club came down with a whoosh, the insect-like creature suddenly sped up and ran up on the outer wall of the destroyed building. Something felt wrong here, but it was too late for the demon to slow down the descent of the club. In an instant, the insect had run up high enough to be at the demon's eye line, before he powerfully kicked the wall. Crack! As the spiderweb-like crack spread on the wall, something shot towards this demon with never-before-seen speed. It was none other than that insect. Vulcan's eyes grew wider. A smile spread on Jin Wu's face as he looked into those large eyes. The Baruka's dagger gripped tightly in his right hand sliced past the bulging artery of Vulcan's neck. Slice, from the blood vessel as thick as a grown man, blood spurted out like an overflowing fountain. Vulcan hurriedly discarded the club and tried to stem the loss of blood with both of its hands. Unfortunately, it was insufficient to block the overflowing of blood. At that moment, there was a visible tremor shaking Vulcan's eyes. Before it had the time to notice it, Jin Wu had climbed up the demon's back and buried the blades of his daggers deeply into that thick neck. I guess, once isn't enough, huh? Jin Wu tilted his head and pulled the daggers out before activating his skill once more. Vital points targeting. Two daggers stabbed deeply into Vulcan's neck again. Stab, stab. Only then did the messages he was waiting for pop up. Leaving the mop-up of the remnants to his trusty soldiers, Jin Wu turned around in order to collect the loot. Hmm, was this feeling similar to unwrapping a gift? Seeing the dead body of Vulcan, a smile automatically formed on his lips. I wonder what'll come out this time. 
he could spy several lights sparkling on the body. He had been feeling rather optimistic about fighting Vulcan, even before the battle started. And as he expected, items were quite literally pouring out from the dead demon. Having checked the list only once, Jin Wu's face was brightening up considerably already. I can pretty much tell that Vulcan's horns should be japped him. From its name to the total number he found, it wasn't that hard to guess that Vulcan's horns were japped him only good for additional gold, just like the demon's horns he got after killing various demons, which meant the remaining three were the real items. And there was this one item that attracted his attention more than the others. What is this material item thing? What could he possibly make with something like that? Or, was the system trying to imply that it might be something related to a quest? Jin Wu's curiosity roused from its slumber after reading about a type of item he hadn't heard of before. If he wanted to read the explanations on the items, he had to acquire them first. So, he chose yes on all the item acquisition messages. Take them all. The lights glittering from different parts of Vulcan all morphed into items and appeared near his feet as soon as he said that. A pair of earrings, a red marble-like object, and timber as big as a grown woman. He could immediately tell which one was the fragment of the world tree among them. Jin Wu looked at the timber. When he did, the information on the item popped up. Rarity, type, material, remaining part of Vulcan's club, originally fashioned out of a branch of the world tree, after the contaminated portion had been removed. Timber from the world tree possess extraordinary magical energy, and is seen as top material for the crafting of the very best magic tools available. Rarity S. Type, accessory, endurance plus 20, stamina plus 20. When worn together with Demon Sovereign's necklace and Demon Sovereign's ring, set bonuses will be unlocked. Set bonus effect 1. Set bonus effect 2. Just like with other items, earrings disappeared from the view, but their options still activated with no problem. A satisfied smile formed on Jin Wu's face after confirming the rise in his stats. So, the accessory set of a demon sovereign, then. Other accessories should be around here somewhere, right? What with the word demon in their names, he could easily guess that those items must be somewhere inside the demon's castle. Just what kind of set bonuses would be unlocked if he managed to find the other two. Rarity A. Type, magic tool. Deed created by solidifying superior demon Vulcan's blood will strengthen all magical effects and cause greater damage. Effect Appetite for Destruction X2 Magic Damage It was a spherical red object the size of a billiard ball. Jin Wu tightly grasped the beat of avarice, but there was no change to his stats. He then summoned and checked the class-related skill windows, since those were the only things that could be called magic in his repertoire. But he saw no change to the number of shadows he could extract nor the number that could be stored. Meanwhile, his soldiers arrived near him one by one after taking down Vulcan's remaining underlings. The first one to arrive was Igret. In the right hand, three, and another three in the left. He carried a total of six demon heads and placed them before Jin Wu. Jin Wu looked at Igret kneeling before him and scratched the side of his head. Boom, hey man, can't you stop doing that? Of course, Igret and his gravely lowered head didn't reply. Because of you, Jin Wu's gaze slowly shifted over to Iron. Nobody could tell just when he did it, but Iron had cut Vulcan's head off and dragged it all the way to Jin Wu, before kneeling on the ground. This guy is starting to imitate you, you know. More importantly, Jin Wu hunted Vulcan down, not Iron. Jin Wu spat out a long groan while keeping his stare fixed to Iron. It was at this point that an amusing idea popped up in his head. Just like how I used Iron's shield, maybe should I try and let these guys use this beat of avarice. What a good timing it was, since he spotted the magic soldiers slowly walking behind the regular infantrymen. They were far slower compared to normal shadow soldiers, never mind the two knights. Jin Wu summoned the first of the three magic soldiers to arrive in the vicinity. When he beckoned with his hand, the magic soldier decked out in the black robe hurriedly walked towards him. Since all shadow soldiers could be controlled via his will. He didn't really need to issue any particular commands here. Jin Wu simply gave the signal. Fire. Right at that moment, a ball of flames that was double the size of the usual attack suddenly materialized at the tip of the magic soldier's raised hand. Jin Wu's eyes opened super wide. Without giving him enough time to get shocked, the ball of flames quickly flew out from the magic soldier's hand. Jin Wu's jaw dropped to the floor. The building was swept up in the grand explosion and collapsed like a house of cards. And the ferocity of the burning flames didn't show any signs of weakening at all afterwards. Jin Wu stared in pure shock at the roaring flames before he hurriedly took the beat of avarice back from the magic soldier. He then quickly checked the item information once more. It's not there. It's definitely not there. He went through the explanation several times to make sure, but without a doubt, 
There was nothing about him being prevented from lending this bead of avarice to someone else. Didn't this mean he could potentially sell this item? Gulp. Jin Wu swallowed his dry saliva before his gaze shifted back to the burning building. In the middle of a sunny afternoon, the young man from the apartment 902, you say. An auntie tilted her head and replied a short while later. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't seen him lately. Ah, is that so? Thank you for your help. Hyun Kai Chiao lowered his head and said thanks. It had been four days since he began waiting for Hunter Xiong Jin Wu near the youth's old apartment building. However, he hadn't run into his target until now. At this point, Hyun Kai Chiao was beginning to feel that making veggie juice every morning was a bit of waste now. Apparently, he told his little sister that he'd be going on a trip with his friend for a week or so. You mean, Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim said that? Yes, in that case, he's probably not on earth anymore. Pardon? Park Huey Jin's eyes opened wide. On Song Min quickly explained himself. We haven't found any evidence of him going overseas. And there is no record of him drawing money from his bank or using his credit card either. You can even find out things like that. Well, it's our job to follow around various hunters, after all. Oh my god. Anyways, on top of this, according to the association's last known location records, the communication with his phone was cut off in the middle of the city, as well. And that happened about five days ago. Doesn't all this sound too mysterious to you? He couldn't have been kidnapped, right? Park Huey Jin inadvertently voiced her worry in the ensuing confusion. However, the gazes of the two people soon met, and they began chuckling almost at the same time. It was hard to tell who started first. By the way, how did you find out about him going on a trip? Oh, bet. It's from Han Songyi. I talk to her often, you see. She goes to the same school with Mr. Xiang Jin Wu's little sister, so I asked her for a favor. Aha. Uh -huh. With Han Song Min's reply, their conversation came to an abrupt end. And then, they began thinking the exact same thing. Just where did that guy disappear to? 75th floor. An army of undead suddenly rose up from the ground, and they numbered several thousand. A normal person would have been left breathless by the sight of this horrifying army, but when he found himself surrounded by so many enemies, Jin Wu didn't even panic for a second. As I thought, just as he expected, there were endless streams of black smoke rising up all around the boss monster. Seeing that, it wasn't all that difficult to guess what kind of monster this Metis happened to be. The guide of the departed souls, is it? And the monster's title only helped to further confirm his suspicion. Sure enough, Metis summoned a powerful undead army. Too bad, Jin Wu just so happened to possess the best type of class within this field. Create a path for me. Soldiers emerged from Jin Wu's shadow. These guys were the real deal. While the hundreds of soldiers created from the skill shadow extraction bought them time, Jin Wu's direct subordinates, the ones he paid careful attention to leveling up ever since his entrance into the demon's castle, carved out a path for him. His destination was obvious. Igrit and Iron took the lead and with frightening speed and destroyed the opposing undead creatures. The distance to the boss, Metis had closed up in an instant. Jin Wu escaped from the undead army's siege and stood before Metis in an instant. Their gazes collided mid-air. You didn't expect this to happen, did you? Jin Wu's gaze was filled with Victor's leisure, and Metis could only flinch from that. No, he thought that the monster flinched. Do monsters feel fear? Such a thought only lingered for a second, before Jin Wu's daggers left behind dozens of afterimages. Plop, the boss-level monster weakly fell to the ground. He already knew through experience that mage-type monsters relying on controlling others to fight were very weak when the battle became one-on-one. -on -one. The moment he saw Metis in the distance, he had envisioned this end. Jin Wu returned the daggers to his inventory. Soon, the expected message popped up. Jin Wu clenched his fists tightly. 220 souls in one go. Now that was an unexpected windfall. A thick smile floated up on Jin Wu's lips. Not much remaining now. He only needed to collect less than 30 now. It was a small enough amount to quickly fill up by hunting down a handful more demons. Jin Wu really wanted to quickly finish this quest and so, he hurriedly retrieved all the loot and entered the floor transfer magic circle. The Eastern United States. H. Wang Dong Su writhed this way and that as if he was having a nightmare, before he shot up from the bed. The first thing he saw was the white ceiling. H. Wang Dong Su tilted his head at these unfamiliar surroundings. Is this a hospital? It wasn't. It wasn't a dream. H. Wang Dong Su wiped the strand of cold sweat traveling down to his chin. It was at this point that he discovered the patient gown he wore and the IV needle stuck to his arm. H. Wang Dong Su's expression hardened in fury. And then, he spoke in a cold voice. If you have something to say, hurry up and say it, and leave. The deputy director of the Hunter Bureau was there with him in the room. 
a middle-aged Caucasian man, with more white than black on his head, slowly approached H. Wang Dong Su's bed. There is something I wanted to ask you personally, so I waited for you to come around. What did he want to ask? H. Wang Dong Su raised his head. The deputy director held his gaze without backing down and asked. That man named Xiong Il H. Wan. Was he really a monster? Do you think I'd attack someone who was a human? I'm not saying that I don't trust you. Only that, I wish to confirm what I saw with my own eyes. The deputy director pushed forward his phone towards H. Wang Dong Su. A certain video footage was playing on its screen. And this is footage captured by CCTV cameras nearby on that day. In the footage, one could see an oriental man rescuing employees from the collapsing Hunter Bureau building. There was no need to ask who that man was. How could H. Wang Dong Su forget? That face was the last thing he saw before he blacked out. That man was Xiong Il H. Wan. The deputy director's complexion darkened. I have never heard of a monster rescuing humans before. Is there no change to your opinion that this man is a monster? He's definitely a monster. Understood. The deputy director pocketed the phone. Once you're discharged from here, stop by the bureau. There are a couple of documents you need to sign. H. Wang Dong Su asked the deputy director as the latter was about to turn around and leave. What happened to that man? He disappeared after fighting you. We're in the midst of tracking him down, but he's powerful enough to knock you down easily, so whether he could be caught or not is, well. Just before he stepped out of the hospital room, the deputy director opened his mouth again, sounding more troubled than before. By any chance, do you have any idea where that man might head off to? Seeing H. Wang Dong Su resolutely keep his mouth shut as if he had nothing more to say, the deputy director quietly left the room. But, once he was gone, H. Wang Dong Su furiously yanked the IV needle out of his arm. FCK. What a humiliating defeat that was. Even before he could figure out what happened, he found his neck trampled on by Xiong Il H. Wan. Not only that, shamefully cowering on the floor, too. Just as he began gasping for air, Xiong Il H. Wen spoke to him. Don't come to Korea. This isn't for my son, but for your sake. You won't be able to close your eyes, even in death. And that's where his memory ended. Once he regained his consciousness, he found himself here. Can't close my eyes even in death. What did he mean by that? Was that a threat to kill H. Wang Dong Su in such a brutal way that he'd be unable to close his eyes? How dare he threaten me? I need better equipment if I want to kill him. Thankfully, it wouldn't be hard getting his hands on that equipment. I should call my guild. The guild H. Wang Dong Su was a part of, Scavenger, was one of the very best in the world. Hell, there was even a joke doing the rounds that, if one were to tally up the value of all the artifacts in possession of the Scavenger Guild, it'd easily exceed the annual budget of a small nation. If I get my hands on some artifacts, there shouldn't be a problem. Madness burned bright within H. Wang Dong Su's eyes. To South Korea. That was H. Wang Dong Su's next destination. I did it. Jin Wu couldn't hide his elation. His luck was good, and he acquired four souls from the very last demon he killed. With that, he was able to meet the quest clear goal. Obviously, once he made his reply, the list of rewards popped up in his view. 1. Any one item available in the system. 2. Plus 20 bonus stat points. 3. An unknown reward. Other rewards did catch his eye. But right now, the first one on the list demanded the most of his attention. It wouldn't be much of an exaggeration to say that he completed this quest solely for the first reward. 2. Accept the first reward. An item he wanted, was it? Of course, there was one. From the moment he saw the details of this quest, Jin Wu was thinking of a certain item. What kind of a result would be facing him now if he chose differently back then? He was curious about this ever since that fateful day. However, he didn't know whether that thing was treated as an item or not. Still, it didn't hurt to try, at least. The system asked him again, as if to urge him on. After a short deliberation, Jin Wu made his reply. The cursed random box. Back when he found himself standing on a crossroad, Jin Wu chose the blessed random box instead of the cursed random box. And the result of that decision was the key to the demon's castle. Thanks to that, he gained entry to this instant dungeon and earned a lot. His level had risen up greatly. He acquired lots of items and is for gold. Well, it was overflowing to such an extent that he was beginning to think he should start spending some very soon. Even if I was given a chance to do over, I'd have chosen the same. However, however, just because he chose to take this path, that didn't mean he was not curious about the potential result of choosing a different path. The blessed random box supposed to give him what he wanted, and the cursed random box that was supposed to give him what he needed. Just what could be inside the latter. I did get what I wanted from the blessed random box, that's for sure. And so, the perfect chance to satisfy that curiosity once and for all had landed in his lap. 
A small box slowly materialized in front of his feet. Yes, his heart beating much quicker now, Jin Wu hurriedly picked the box up. However, he was suddenly overcome with this feeling that the weight of this box was rather familiar to him. Could it be? He quickly ripped the lid open and confirmed what was inside, only for his eyes to grow very large. Isn't this? The additional stat points he earned as the quest completion reward were still waiting for him. And of course, he put them all in intelligence. Strength, 178. Endurance, 137. Agility, 147. Intelligence, 149. Perception, 119. Finally, intelligence had exceeded other stats. It was still some ways off strength, but when considering the fact that he didn't even pay attention to the intelligence stat until recently, this growth could only be called lightning fast. Along with that message, a scroll similar in size to the entry permit appeared in his hands. What's this? Jin Wu's eyes opened wider at this unexpected type of reward, and he unfurled the scroll right away. You can learn the crafting methods of divine water of life. Jin Wu's eyes widened even further. I can craft an item. With this, and here he was, thinking that only those who had awakened as mage types could craft weapons containing magical energy. Now that he thought about it, though, he was also a mage type, wasn't he? Rarity S. Type, consumable. A mysterious liquid medicine that cures any and all illnesses through the powerful magic contained within. The effect will only manifest after one whole bottle has been consumed. Cures, any and all illnesses. The moment he read that information, he thought about his mother, still confined to the hospital. He had already confirmed through Yu Jin Ho multiple times that effects of various potions still worked on other people. If he could truly make this divine water of life, then it meant that he'd be able to save his mother. His hands holding the scroll trembled from excitement. The ingredients were also on the simpler side, so to speak. Fragment of the World Tree He earned that after killing Vulcan on the 50th floor. Spring water from the Forest of Echoes He got that after killing Menace the Necromancer on the 75th floor. And finally, purified blood of the demon king. This item hadn't shown up, yet. However, thinking back to the two ingredients that had come out so far, he could easily guess where he might find some of this purified blood of the demon king from. The upper floors. I'm sure it's with the final boss of the demon's castle, probably on the top floor. In other words, simply by clearing the demon's castle dungeon, the ingredients to craft the divine water of life would fall into his lap one by one. It happened, then. Ah, uh, a gasp of epiphany leaked out of his mouth, completely unbeknownst to him. That's how surprised Jin Wu was. Could it be that? The item he wanted as per description on the blessed random box said, Could that be this divine water of life? Mom, thinking about the possibility that he'd get to see his mother again all healthy, his eyes began welling up with emotions. Jin Wu summoned his inventory and retrieved an item stored right next to the spring water. It was a necklace, seemingly carved out from skulls of various small creatures. Rarity S. Type, Accessory, Agility plus 20, Intelligence plus 20. When worn together with Demon Sovereign's earrings and Demon Sovereign's ring, set bonus effects will be unlocked. Set Effect 1. Set Effect 2. The spring water from the Forest of Echoes wasn't the only loot he got from killing the Guide of the Departed Souls, Metis. Indeed, this rather vile-looking necklace also came out, too. Why are the designs of all the necklaces I found so crappy? Jin Wu frowned deeply while recalling the appearance of the dog collar he was currently wearing. He slowly brought the Demon Sovereign's necklace closer to his neck. Replace. The skull necklace disappeared from his hands, only to be replaced by a dog collar. He quickly shoved the dog collar inside his inventory, and checked the newly unlocked set effect of the Demon Sovereign's accessory set. Set effect 1, all stats plus 5. Set effect 2, all of my stats rose up by 5 points. He only managed to unlock one set effect, yet he received a boost similar to leveling up 5 times. And then, he still had one more unknown effect to go, the one he'd receive after gathering all the accessories. The Demon Sovereign's Ring when considering the possibility that the last unlocked set effect from all three accessories being in one place should be even greater than the individual parts on their own, this really was already an amazing performance. However, acquiring accessories rated at S was only a part of the harvest he enjoyed after entering the demon's castle. The real profit was his level jumping up so high. Jin Wu stared at his level that had climbed up to 77 and smiled in content. I leveled up 16 times inside a week. Such a leveling up speed was unthinkable when entering rank C dungeons. There was one thing he couldn't really figure out yet. Jin Wu let the light from the lamp fall on the object that came out of the cursed random box. Just what the hell is this thing? It was a pitch black key that seemed to absorb all light. 
No information popped up in his view, either. This is the first time seeing an item with absolutely no information. The keys to instant dungeons could be seen as pretty common, since he got them from random boxes every now and then. But this guy here, he had never seen anything quite like it. Where am I supposed to use this? Perhaps because it came out of a box named Cursed Random This and That. He couldn't help but think that there was this ominous aura circling around the key. He acquired this key through so much hard work, so he couldn't even throw it away. Well, I'm sure I'll get to use it sooner or later. The cursed random box was supposed to give him something that he needed, after all. Has it been four years already? Or, maybe it was close to five now. Jin Wu's expression was full of reminiscence as he stood in front of the employee manning the reception kiosk. The employee's head tilted this way and that after taking one look at Jin Wu's choice of identification. Isn't this a hunter license? It is. Employee formed a confused expression. If you are unhappy with your assigned rank, you should head over to another depar. No, it's not that. I wish to take the reassignment test. There are guys like that every now and then. Hunters who are not satisfied by the reality of their situation and swim inside daydreams before coming back here hoping against hope. So, is that guy also? The manager nodded his head. Rewakened, my foot. Others are busy raking in the dough as hunters, getting famous and all that. But well, he drew the short straw and he ended up as a nobody. So, he's just trying to escape from reality. Aha, uh -huh. dealing with guys like that will only tire you out. So, just tell him that he'll be paying the fee for the test and send him on his way to the measurement room. Roger that. The fingers of the manager stopped typing on the keyboard. The name written on the hunter license. Why did it feel like he had heard of that name before from somewhere? Where was it? Ah, uh, that man asked for a favor, didn't he? That man asked the manager to give him a call if a hunter named Seong Jin Wu ever showed up here. Hello, it's Beek Yun Ho speaking. Ah, uh, hello there, Chairman Beek. I'm calling you because of the hunter you spoke about the last time. The man named Seong Jin Wu. He really came here today. But, how did you know that he might appear here? Did you just say that Mr. Seong Jin Wu came there? Yes, he was here just now, applying to get a reassignment test. The conversation came to an abrupt halt and an awkward silence pervaded the line. However, only a short while later, an urgent voice came out from the phone's speaker. Even if it's only for a short while, can you somehow delay the measurement process? I'm on my way over there right now. The manager began tilting his head. Did he just mishear that? The master of the one and only White Tiger Guild was speaking with an anxious voice. Well, I'll be. Besides all that, though, the evaluation process was out of his hands, already. The manager could only sheepishly reply while scratching the side of his head. That man must have entered the measurement building by now. Jin Wu parked his butt on the very last spot available of the waiting room's bench. Currently, there were three people waiting for their turn here. All of them looked quite tense, nervous. Jin Wu could sympathize with what these people were going through inwardly at this moment. Well, the directions of their lives would be decided with the results of today's evaluation, after all. The first time Jin Wu came here, he was thinking about the exact same things as these people. What if I was a rank A? No, even a rank B. Or, could it be, I'm a rank S. Swimming in a happy daydream, only to be shocked to the core after receiving the evaluation of rank E. Thinking back to that day four years ago, Jin Wu couldn't help but smirk slightly. They are all from various guilds, apparently. Various guilds, is it? Yes. Well, hunters don't usually seek out smaller guilds, so they resorted to sending people over here and set up camp just so they can sweet-talk awakened like us after we're done with the evaluation. Indeed, there was a certain chilly, unfriendly and competitive air circulating among those folks. And, the way they are looking in this direction is pretty predatory, too. Well, there was a reason for that, of course. I'm telling you this because it might help you. But you see, it's better not to sign up with guilds like theirs. Why not? From what I hear, smaller guilds take on lots of dangerous raids, and their hunter fatality rate is far higher than average, too. Jin Wu nodded his head in agreement. At the end of the day, the circumstances of smaller guilds would always remain a bit ambiguous. Unlike privately organized freelancer-led raid parties, clearing low-ranked dungeons wouldn't satisfy them financially. But then again, the skills of the hunters signed up with them wasn't quite good enough to clear higher rank dungeons. So, accidents happen frequently during their raids, which means recruiting new hunters becomes doubly important for them. And so, they arrived at a point where they had to follow the potential newbies right into the association building and prey on them. Next, please. Since the location for the evaluation itself was wide open, one could easily read the expressions on those who finished the test, as well as the employees performing the said test. 
and the expression of the guy who had taken his test just now didn't look so good. I guess it's either a D or an E. Those folks from the smaller guilds must have thought about the same thing as Jin Wu, because they showed no interest whatsoever even when an awakened walked right past them. Wasn't that too honest a reaction from them? Well, if high-ranked hunters appeared frequently, they wouldn't be paid big bucks anyway. For regular citizens, even being a rank C would be a huge jackpot. One could still earn a fair bit of money by entering freelancer raid parties, or if one's luck was good, then entering large guilds was a viable option, too. Indeed, there were four rank CS among the White Tiger Guild's new recruits, weren't there? If one successfully managed to enter a large guild, then it was pretty much guaranteed that you'd earn an annual salary similar to what doctors or lawyers made. I heard that you'd get a ton of money up front when signing with a large guild. Actually, I, I owe some money, you see. Because of that, I had to separate from my little girl and must live alone for the time being. Maybe it's because of that, but I, I'm feeling really nervous. Meanwhile, another awakened walked out, and, next up, please come this way. Are you feeling okay? No, no, it's not that, but, um, do you mind going ahead first? I'm, I'm too tense right now, you see. Was there a reason to refuse when someone wished to give up his spot in the queue? Jin Wu quickly accepted the proposal. Anyone would be feeling nervous if these few minutes determined the rest of their lives. What is your name? It's Xiang Jin Wu. Mr. Xiang Jin Wu, right? Please place your hand on the black colored panel over there and wait for a little while. Following the instruction, Jin Wu walked over to the measuring device and placed his hand on the black panel. Huh? This guy's already been evaluated as an awakened rank T. The employee took a look at the documentation and glanced at Jin Wu with a mystified expression. Just why were almost all the hunters coming here to retake tests all rank E? The employee's expression changed to that of apathy as he activated the measuring device. The magic energy measuring device buzzed noisily, and a short while later, it stopped its operation. The results appeared on the display monitor. Huh? What's going on here? The employee tilted his head this way and that, before speaking to Jin Wu, as the latter was about to take his hand off the panel. Hold up, please. Yes, I'd like to run the test one more time. Okay. Jin Wu placed his hand back on the panel. Huh? But, something like this never happened before. The expression of the employee gradually hardened. Why was the measuring device malfunctioning all of a sudden? The employee asked for Jin Wu's cooperation once more. I'm truly sorry, but one more time, please. Even before he was asked to take the test again, Jin Wu had already decided to wait and thus didn't bother to lift his hand away from the panel. Why is the device behaving like this? Cold sweat drops formed on the employee's forehead. Where is Chang Sik? Why are you alone here? The employee quickly looked behind him and he found manager Jiang Kai-su from the rank evaluation application department standing there. Manager Jiang, relief formed on the employee's face after an unexpected reinforcement made his entrance. The senior officer went to the bathroom just now. That fool, how dare he vacate his position in the middle of office who? Jiang Kai-su couldn't bring himself to finish that sentence. The measuring device is acting a little weird. The device is what now? Please, take a look. This error message keeps popping up. Once the employee took a step back, Jiang Kai-su stood in his stead in front of the monitor that displayed the result of Jin Wu's measurement. And right away, Jiang Kai-su's expression froze up. How long have you been working here? It's been around six months, sir. Did I press the wrong button? Nope. Just call Chang Sik and tell him to get over here right now. Excuse me. I'm saying, his toilet break or whatever isn't important anymore, so tell him to get his ass over here right away. Jiang Kai-su raised his voice. The employee flinched and asked, W what's the matter, manager? This isn't an error message, but it's saying impossible to measure. Don't you understand what that means? Eh? But, that wasn't an error message. Why was every single newbie employee such a dumb ass? Jiang Kai-su's gaze left the employee and landed on the person taking the evaluation test. This message means that this device can't measure that person's magic power. Did this newbie say it had been around six months since he started working here? Forget about six months, something like this had not happened in the past two years, so of course, it wasn't surprising at all to see a newbie employee being completely oblivious. Jiang Kai-su's voice trembled as he replied, Right, he's a rank S. Rank S, special. This rank had been in wide use so people mistook it for an actual official rank. But in reality, this rank simply existed to group those awakened who couldn't be measured by any device. 
Excuse me, Mr. Xiang Jin Wu, with the current device. Kim Chang Sik immediately remembered that Jin Wu was already a hunter, so he changed the way he addressed the youth. No, wait. Allow me to start over. It's impossible to measure your magical energy output with this device, Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim. We need to ask for permission from the higher-ups if we want to use the precision measuring device. So would you mind if you come and visit us again in three days' time? By the way, it sounds like Block B is a bit noisier than usual today. Block B, you say? Truth be told, Chief Park couldn't hear anything at all. However, Choi jong was a rank S hunter. His five senses should never be compared to that of a regular person's. If Choi jong said it was getting rowdier down there, then something must have happened for real. An honorable guest had come to visit, so what a shameful blunder this was. Chief Park frowned slightly and spoke up. Let me go and find out what's happening. No, wait. I'm also getting curious, so. Choi jong raised his head, and a mysterious flash of light could be seen in his eyes for a moment. And an equally mysterious smile formed on his lips. Why don't we go together? The entirety of the block B had become deathly silent. Just now, definitely, impossible to measure. D does that mean, that guy's a rank S. I've only ever heard of it. But seeing an impossible to measure rank with my own eyes is. Gulp. The recruitment agents dispatched by various smaller guilds were busy swallowing dry saliva as they stared at Jin Wu turning in their direction. However, none of them tried to talk to him. If he was a rank C, then they would have started a war of nerves trying to sign him up to their respective guilds. They would have formed the proverbial queue just for a chance to talk to him. What about a rank B, then? They would pounce on him like crazy while throwing around quite attractive sounding offers, such as guaranteed spot as a high ranking officer in the guild, or shares in the guild, etc. This man, who got his magic energy measured just now, was supposedly a rank S. Not an A, but an S. It might be an easy thing to say, but the truth was, that single letter was only used to denote the very best awakened in the country, with only nine of them existing in South Korea. With that man included, it'll be ten, isn't it? The tenth rank S hunter. This youth was not someone these headhunters from the various small guilds could even attempt to talk to. Wait a minute. This, couldn't this be my opportunity? A handful of quick-witted scouts suddenly had this remarkable idea. How about acting as a middleman? Just as the scouts sneakily glanced at their peers and began inching forward, someone suddenly pointed towards the entrance of the Block B. Huh? Isn't that? Was it because everyone was so tense already? No one could tell who did it first. Everyone seemingly shifted their gazes over in the direction the first man to open his mouth pointed at. The eyes of the scouts widened immediately. Yuck. A man wearing a stylish business suit was entering Block B. There wasn't a single person present who didn't know that man's name. Choi. Choi Jong-in. Why? Why is the leader of the hunters here? Sure enough, Choi Jong-in felt the gazes of the crowd and lightly tidied up his suit, before walking straight towards Jin Wu. But, isn't this too fast for him to get here after receiving an alert? No, wait a minute. Did he already sign up with the hunters? Did the hunters know about him? Well, the top guild sure operates on another level. Scouts present all readily accepted the inevitable conclusion to come. Perhaps, it was a relief that none of them stepped forward and tried to chat up the youth. How embarrassing would it have been, when one of them started yapping on and ended up running into Choi Jong-in, instead. Jin Wu was breathing a sigh of relief at the grand entrance of Choi Jong-in. What a relief. He was pondering what to do next after being stared at by so many pairs of eyes. But what a wonderful timing it was, that man walking in and dividing the attention. Jin Wu inwardly thanked Choi jong in for providing some unexpected help. Choi jong ins eyes gleamed brightly as he stared into Jin Wu's face. This man's the tenth. Choi jong in beat around the bush with Chief Park about checking out the situation together or some such. But the truth was, he already had sensed what was happening before coming here. I mean, they've been yapping on so loudly about impossible to measure this in device error that, so how can I not hear them? Thanks to that, though, he was given a huge opportunity here. Choi jong in cleared his throat and formed his trademark smile. I'm Choi jong in the leader of the Hunter's Guild. Of course, Jin Wu knew that already. Well, that man's face could be seen frequently enough whenever a TV was turned on, after all. I'm aware that you just had your awakened rank evaluation. Yes, by any chance, have you thought of a guild to join? I'd like to speak to you regarding that issue, so can you spare a minute to talk, please? Sorry, but don't have the time. Jin Wu quickly voiced his refusal and hurriedly left the Block B building. It happened so fast that Choi jong and didn't even have the chance to think about stopping the youth from leaving. Meanwhile, the association employees and the scouts from other guilds belatedly realized what had transpired and began freaking out. 
What the hell? Wait, did Choi jong and get kicked to the curve? No matter who sees it, he was ignored. Mutter, mutter. The waiting room became very noisy all of a sudden. Choi jong and did his best to maintain his calm and look to his side. Chief Park. Yes, Chief Park replied with an awkward look on his face. Did I make a mistake during my introduction? W-L, I, I wonder. I'm not sure. Obviously, Chief Park heard everything as he was standing to the side. Still, this wasn't the right time to say that out loud, no. When Chief Park shut his mouth, Choi Jong and sheepishly scratched the side of his head. Was I too careless with my approach? Still, there was no reason to feel disappointed here. Without a doubt, he was one step ahead of other guilds. I'm the only one who knows about the appearance of the new rank S. The remeasurement was scheduled for three days later. There was still some time left until the official announcement. Before that, though, I gotta find another opportunity to talk to him, no matter what. While Choi jong and began pondering his options, he spotted someone else hurriedly running towards the building. Wait, isn't he? Now that was definitely a familiar face. When that man pushed open the glass door and entered, Choi jong and spoke up with a surprised expression on his face. Chairman Beek, what are you? Beek yun hos eyes also widened after recognizing Choi jong in. Master Choi, Choi jong and quickly deciphered Beek yun hos expression. It's like, he knows he's been busted. It was not very likely that he came running after an informant rang him up just now. No, the time of his arrival didn't make sense if that was the case. I mean, the distance between the White Tiger Guild offices and the Hunter Association is great, so. That's right, Bi Kyun Ho knew from the get-go. He had prior knowledge regarding what would happen here. Meaning, he knows about the existence of that man already. But, that couldn't be. If so, he'd never let that man go through the reassignment test in this fashion. If it were me, I'd make him sign the contract first and then let him take the test. It was here that the scattered puzzle pieces in Choi jong ins head began falling into their respective places. No way. Could it be? The White Tiger Guild. The incident during their training. The Red Gate. The Mystery Helper. And then, the newly appeared Rank S Awakened. The White Tiger must have received help from someone they don't want others to know about. Found him. So, it was that man, huh? Choi jong and didn't say anything else and relaxedly walked past Bi kyun ho Meanwhile, Bi kyun ho took a look around. He couldn't spot jin Wu anywhere. Am I too late? Bi kyun ho could only look on at the distancing back of Choi jong in and softly sigh. Who knew that the Master of Hunters Guild would be at the Hunters Association? Bi kyun ho scratched the back of his head and muttered to himself. Things just got complicated. The visiting hours of the Seoul's Ilshin Hospital ended at 8 in the evening. Are you the guardian of the patient Park Kyoung Hai? That's correct. You can go and see her. Are you aware of the visiting hours cut off time? Yes, I'm aware. Finishing his chat by the nursing station, Jin Woo quickly walked to the patient ward his mother was in. Thanks to his hurried steps, he arrived there not too long afterwards. Jin Woo opened the door and entered the ward, and quietly sat down on the chair next to the bed his mother was lying in. She seemed to be in a deep slumber. With her like this, it's like she'd wake up at any moment now. A slumber that no one could wake up from. It was a new type of illness that appeared with the advent of the gates. I heard from someone that this hospital alone has over 10 patients suffering the same illness. I'll save you. Mom did her best to stabilize the family when his father went missing. Even though she never enjoyed robust health. Ending his definitely not short visit, Jin Wu wordlessly walked out of the ward and carefully closed the door behind him. And when he turned around to leave, he got to spot a familiar face standing in the corridor. On that day, it was you who killed the monsters in the dual dungeon, wasn't it? A low and think, manly voice. Sharp, scary eyebrows. He was none other than Wu Jin Chiao from the monitoring division. Jin Wu didn't reply. There was no reason to, nor did he particularly feel like it, either. Instead, there was something else he wanted to ask. How did you find out that I was here? I tried to guess the places you might head off to. I called the hospital and they informed me of your presence here. The association was paying for mom's hospital fees, after all. Well, that's going to change soon. Did you seek me out just to ask me about that day's events? No, I did not. Well, then, how can I help you? There is someone who'd like to speak to you. Would you mind accompanying me for a little while? Is that an order? No. He then deeply bowed his head, his voice sounding much more serious than before. I'd like to ask you for this favor. Jin Wu didn't expect Wu Jin Chiao, with his fearsome countenance and all, to assume that kind of attitude. Jin Wu pondered a little, before deciding to find out who wanted to meet him first. Who wants to talk to me? It's the president of the Hunters Association. Go Gun Huey. Wu Jin Chiao then pointed towards the corner behind him and spoke. The association president is currently here. 
the heaven above heaven, the S-rank hunter Gogun Huey, also known as the sky above the sky. After discovering Jin Wu, Gogun Huey stood up from the seat. You must be Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim. He might be over 80 years old, but his physique was still quite amazing. Indeed, his size reminded one of either a retired pro wrestler or a traditional grappler. However, he didn't emit any of the overbearing aura one might expect from someone like that. That's surprising. Judged from his appearance or his station, Jin Wu expected him to be a bit of douche, a stuck-up of sorts, yet the entourage accompanying that man carried scarier expressions instead. Jin Wu inadvertently caught the glimpse of a golden badge pinned to Go Gun Huey's jacket. This man currently served as a member of the National Assembly, and at the same time, as the president of the association as well. And a rank S awakened on top of that, too. I'd like to congratulate you on becoming the newest rank S hunter. Jin Wu tilted his head. But, the result of the reassignment test hasn't come out yet. Dogun Huey shook his head immediately. Actually, the test itself does not have much of a meaning. Excuse me. While Jin Wu formed a confused expression, Gogun Huey was forming a gentle smile. The truth is, the so-called precision measuring device is used to draw a finer line on the level of one's powers. It's not designed to sense something that already has exceeded the scope of other devices measuring capability. Then, how come? Do you wish to ask me why we created another process called reevaluation? Indeed, he did want to ask that. If the end results were going to be the same, then why go through yet another cumbersome process? Go Gun Huey answered in rather a straightforward manner. It's because we were looking for a grace period. A grace period. Even before Jin Wu could ask what he meant by that, Go Gun Huey spoke up first, looking somewhat embarrassed. It's to create an opportunity where we can meet and speak to someone like you, Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim. Ah, uh, listening to the association president, Jin Wu finally figured it out. As you may well know, there aren't that many excellent hunters in the association, like Division Chief Wu Jin Qiao here, compared to our size. That was because of large guilds, and that's because of the large guilds. But, of course, Jin Wu nodded his head. Signing up with a large guild guarantees you fat salaries and fame, so who would want to come and work for the association? The salaries for the association's hunters weren't small by any means. But then again, when compared to what one could potentially be earning by working for large guilds, the salary was pitifully pathetic. And so, we came up with a plan in case a truly exceptional Awaken decides to visit the association. So, that would be the re-evaluation test, then. Well, sure. If the result of the evaluation was publicly made available, and was spread everywhere, would the association have the chance to make an approach like this? It certainly made sense. I won't beat around the bush and get to the point. We're not a corporation, so we can't promise you lots of money. However, Go Gun Huey touched his chest area, before extending his fist that was gripping onto something. However, we can help you in a different way. I don't quite understand. What I'm saying here is that we can help guide you, Xiong Jin Wu Hunter Nim, down a very different direction. His clenched fist slowly unfurled. On Go Gun Huey's palm, a golden badge gleamed brightly. Political power, is it? Even after that, Jin Wu maintained a suspicious expression. You know about the five guilds, yes. How could anyone not know of them? Jin Wu silently nodded his head. Currently, you'll find that in South Korea, the heads of five large dragons are locked in a delicate balance. Around the capital, the hunters, the white tiger, and the reapers. And in the countryside, the shining star and the night order. If you decide to enter one of the five guilds, doesn't matter which one, the delicate balance will shatter and everything will change. Even now, the status and authority of large guilds were soaring into high heavens. However, what if one of them managed to sign up another rank S hunter and use that as the springboard to soar even higher? Would they listen to the association anymore? The association's sole role was to remain as the center of the balance among the hunters by using power. It is simply far too inadequate to control and tie down hunters with laws and regulations and the threat of prosecution. Jin Wu too thought like that before. Monsters found in dungeons weren't the only monsters out there. Hunters were also, in a way, monsters. If one were to look only at the strength aspect, then hunters were far more dangerous monsters than regular monsters found in dungeons. That is why the association exists. Go Gun Huey's expression became far more grave. And the association needs your help, Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim. For the first time in a long, long while, Go Gun Huey was feeling nervous and expectant at the same time as he asked the next question in a soft but firm voice. What will you choose, Hunter Nim? That wasn't a bad suggestion. 
If Go Gun Huey were to lend his support, then even the most average guy would be on the fast track to success. The National Assembly, the government, the Hunters Association, and even the mass media, too, it'd be very hard to find a sector that Go Gun Huey's reach did not extend to. Not only that, if the person receiving that support just so happened to a rank S hunter, I can't even imagine how far a person like that would climb up. All of a sudden, Jin Woo pictured himself sitting right next to the member of National Assembly Go Gun Huey while kitted out in a super dope designer business suit. His heart palpitated ever so slightly. Such an opportunity wouldn't come knocking every day, right? However, there was one important thing missing from that scenario. If I sign up with the association, I won't be able to increase my level. The higher ranked hunters working for the association never participated in raids at all. Their main role was to deal with other hunters, not to hunt down and kill monsters. Jin Wu eventually opened his mouth. And sorry, Go Gun Huey's expression hardened immediately. I thought I saw determination fill up his face just now. Was I mistaken? He couldn't hide the disappointment in his face. In the end, the ambition of the man named Xiang Jin Wu was only about this much. Go Gun Huey wasn't lying about lending support for the other path. Actually, he was thinking of something even greater. A new rank S to appear in two years. Go Gun Huey was thinking of keeping this youth close and teaching him the ropes, and if the kid showed promise, groom him to become the next successor. Because, a powerful figure was needed to support the association when he was gone. Meaning, Go Gun Huey was planning to hand over everything he had. However, for the result to be like this, how laughable I am. Go Gun Huey took away the golden badge and asked in a dejected voice, Is it? Because of money. Jin Wu replied right away, No, it is not. I want to fight. Jin Wu's unhesitating reply smacked the back of Go Gun Huey's head. What did he say? It definitely felt like he got sucker punched just now. That? Did you mean that you want to fight against the monsters? That's correct. Jin Wu didn't bother with unnecessary explanations and spoke frankly. I want to enter gates and hunt down monsters. I believe the place I belong is inside dungeons. How can this be? Go Gun Huey's eyes widened. A man like him standing on top of many others knew whether someone was telling the truth or lying through their teeth simply from the light emitting from their eyes. The position he occupied could only be reached by possessing such a skill, after all. That was why Go Gun Huey knew it. Those eyes. He's being dead serious. Go Gun Huey's own eyes staring at Jin Wu did a 180. How long has it been since I felt this? By the time Go Gun Huey had awakened, his body was already too old. That was why, instead of fighting against monsters, he looked for other things he could do, instead. By using the money he got from selling his company, he established the Korean Hunters Association, gathered hunters, and with his fame serving as the foundation, he marched straight into the National Assembly, and even had a hand in creating laws that governed hunters. However, there was this lingering regret in his heart that would never go away, even though he worked tirelessly all this time. If only I was younger by 20, no, 10 years, I'd been. Go Gun Huey pressed his hand on his chest. His heart that threatened to quit at any time was pounding quickly, rather noticeably, now. My heart can still make a noise like this. The rhythmic beating of the heart felt good. On the other hand, Jin Wu was tilting his head. Isn't this strange? He refused the suggestion of Go Gun Huey, fully preparing himself to be at odds with the association in the process, yet the president seemed to be happy about something, instead. My younger sister is watching the house alone, so I should get going now. Thank you for your time. Go Gun Huey got up along with Jin Wu and pulled something out from his inner pocket. And, please take this. It was a business card. If you require my assistance, don't hesitate and give me a call. Go Gun Huey was smiling brightly. Fu. While letting out a sigh, Go Gun Huey plopped down on the chair. Are you alright, sir? What an enjoyable meeting this had been, a first in such a long while. Go Gun Huey sat there smiling for a long time before turning to his paw and handed out an order. Clear the schedule for the rest of the day. But, sir, the meeting with the ministers. Cancel them all. Go Gun Huey chuckled to himself. I do not wish to waste this good feeling on those small-minded idiots. He wished to retain this lingering feel-good attitude for today, at least. How about having a drink with me today? At this quite unexpected suggestion, Wu Jin Chiao could only form an awkward smile. I'm not very good with holding my liquor, sir. Will that be fine with you? Uh-huh. I didn't take you for a person like that. Go Gun Huey playfully clicked his tongue. Haven't you heard of the old saying about the cup size of a man's drink determining the extent of the world he can make his own? 
My apologies, sir. Wu Jinqiao's face reddened in embarrassment and scratched the back of his head. Go Gun Hui's gaze shifted towards the end of the corridor that Jin Wu had disappeared to. Hunter Xiang Jin Wu. How well would he be able to hold his liquor? Thinking that he'd like to find out someday. A thin smile formed on Go Gun Hui's lips. I came running because you said you'd buy me a meal. But it's just some measly pork belly. Huh? Are you looking down on the mighty pork belly now? This place is where my great memory of me and my Haiyang Nim was created, you know. Yu Jin Ho and his deeply reddened face put the empty shot glass of alcohol down on the table and snorted out in drunkenness. Okay, so why did you bring me to this place of such a wonderful memory? Yu Su Haiyan formed a flabbergasted expression. She was getting ready to sleep. But then, Yu Jin Ho called her out of the blue. Nuna, please console me. Please. Why Nuna all of a sudden? She found his tearful whimpering rather desperate and pitiful, so she hurriedly came out to meet him. But to think, the place he brought her to was a diner. It was only obvious for Yu Su Haiyan to be less than impressed by her current situation, when considering the fact that she grew up as a refined lady of a Keyball's family, and also from the fact that she was working as a top model nowadays. What's going on? Will you just speak up? Yu Su Haiyan asked while pouring more saju in Yu Jin Ho's empty shot glass. Look, look at this. This is the phone number of my dear Haiyang Nim. Right? Still sounding tearful, Yu Jin Ho pushed forward his smartphone. On the screen, one could see the lengthy list of calls. One successful call, and four failed attempts. Even then, the first one that got through was apparently cut short in the middle, too. Wait, did you call me out here because you couldn't reach someone you know on the phone? Nod, nod. Gimme that. She quickly tapped on the call icon. Rink. The ringtone got cut off a short while later. When that happened, Yu Su Haiyan began glaring at him. Hey, you dumba ass. Hey. Yu Jin Ho raised his head from the table. The ringtone cuts out after 15 seconds. That guy is not avoiding answering you. It's just that his phone's been switched off. By the way, just who is this Haiyan Nim guy? You'll find out soon enough. After signing up with the Yu Jin Guild, that is. Yu Jin Ho was about to say those words out loud. But then... His eyes widened slightly after seeing the footage being shown on the TV mounted high up on the diner's wall. Uh, isn't that guy? Yu Su Haiyan also turned her gaze towards the TV. Well, my filming schedule hasn't been cleared yet. We'll only know after my evaluation result comes out. The ticker tape on the bottom of the screen said that Ri Min Xiong was planning to stop by the Hunters Association soon and take his rank assignment test. Wowzers, as expected of the star of the Korean wave, Ri Min Xiong. Look at the number of reporters there. Aren't those guys from the Chinese media? How can that guy lie so boldly in front of so many people? Eh? Everyone who's in the know all know it already. That's all just a show. He already has been ranked A, you know. He's just playing it up for the cameras because he wants to be the talk of the town. He's putting on an act. The difference in his personality between when the cameras were around and when they were not was, as the kids like to say nowadays, the fourth dimensional wall that no one could cross. That was the type of person Yu Su Haiyan detested the most. Not too long ago, he called her up totally out of the blue and started his SH tick while saying something about being a hunter like her. She had to go through a ringer trying to end that call. What an unpleasant bee starred. Even before he had awakened, he was infamous for his incredible arrogance. But now that he was about to become a rank a hunter, how bad would it get now? There were two more days to the reassignment test. He decided to gather more information on the artifact trade during this time period. So he switched on his computer. As he browsed through the available information on the auction goods, Jin Wu's eyes grew wider and wider. The minimum starts in the hundreds of millions, huh? Was that all? Items that looked okay to his eyes commanded an average of several dozen billion. Then again, to hunters, good equipment was like their lifeline. There was no need to even mention the obvious fact that using better, more expensive equipment made you safer. Most hunters made quite a bit of coin, and when given the chance to buy tools that would allow them to hunt faster and safer, was there a reason for them to hold back with their money? Jin Wu could understand it. Indeed, he could, but that didn't change the fact that he was taken greatly by surprise. Seeing the pricing of various artifacts, he was getting more nervous by the minute. This, I don't think it'll be enough with what I have in the bank. He didn't find a defensive artifact designed to defend against flame-type damage, but it looked increasingly likely that the amount he had would not be enough to buy high-grade defensive equipment at all. And I thought that I had enough money now. That opinion was from the perspective of a normal person. As a hunter, it fell far, far too short. He had around 1.7 billion won saved up in the bank. If he were to purchase artifacts he wanted, he definitely had to sell the Bead of Avarice. Now that he was the seller, Jin Wu's expression rapidly changed. 
Leaving a lot of money to buy an artifact means that I can sell my own artifact at a sky-high price. Click. He moved the mouse and continued to search, until the list of the magical tools currently on sale appeared on the monitor. No matter how hard he searched, he could not find a single artifact that doubled the magic damage. Man, these prices for the magic tools are no laughing matter, aren't they? When he thought about it, though, the boost of 20% was not small at all. Only the upper tier, no, the very best hunters out there, would be able to afford such an expensive artifact. The best available option was to let the artifact specialists handle the bead and sell it via auction. Sure, there was the issue of taxes and commission fee, but this was still the best and quickest method that wouldn't produce any unnecessary baggage in the long run. So, the only remaining issue would be with me providing the information on where I've found this thing. A ranky hunter showing up with a crazy artifact that shouldn't even exist in the first place. Would anyone quietly accept that? That is why I need my new license. The new hunter license with rank S nicely printed on it. He took the reassignment test solely for that license. And the result was a resounding success. If he went by what the association president Go Gun Huey had said, he'd be able to get his hands on that license in two days time without an issue. Jin Wu leaned against the back of the chair. Two days. It was a bit too short to do anything substantial, and maybe a bit too long to do nothing but lounge around at home. Should I just take a look anyway? Feeling half interested, Jin Wu moved the mouse cursor to the recruitment notice board in the hunter forums. You're a ranky. Yes, you've never done anything like this before. No, never. Well, I. Uh, your speciality is. I'm a close quarter combat type. Well, at least that's a relief. The foreman wearing a hard hat swept his gaze up and down over Jin Wu. For a ranky, he's got a pretty impressive physique, doesn't he? His eyes look okay, too. Jin Wu patiently waited for the answer from the foreman. The foreman returned Jin Wu's hunter license and smiled jovially. Ha ha ha, there are quite a few people similar to you here, Mr. Jin Wu. Don't be too nervous and let's get along well. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next chapter.